Hey, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine. And you? I'm well, thank you. I'm well, thank you. Good to see you. Good to hear you. You're welcome. Um, um, how was the weekend? Well, good. Very busy weekend. I have um, programmed uh, from Wednesday I can, I can to Sunday. From Wednesday to, to Sunday. Uh, well, I was all ministering and things like that. Just taking a rest today. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Awesome. We'll give God praise. We we'll thank God for his blessings. That's, that's allowed us to see another, another week. Yes, sir. Uh, another day, you know. And it's allowed us to see joy. Mm. Right. We're not having to be people that are helped or we are not in emergency room or anything. Are you? Are you? <laughs> uh, able to see it with joy, with happiness, believing in for even greater things in our lives. Yes, so sir. something to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Sister Ronke. Thank you, um, Tibanke. You're welcome. Thanks for coming along. Yeah, um, good morning, sister. All right. I'm just going to, uh, let me ask, no, I'll ask that when, when we finish praying. Let me go ahead and continue what we've been sharing. We've been talking about the rich woman at Shunem, right? Last week we began to talk about how she might have been affected and come to be who she, she grew to be. We we're talking about the subconscious mind. We we're talking about what happens when we were conceived in our mother's womb up till about age five, there about uh, age five, age seven, a person's personality is pretty much set. You know, at that point in time, your, your personality is already fully set, but it's probably like 70% to 80% you are set as to what your personality is or will be. Because at that point, you've received so much impute that you are already, if I use the, the colloquial word, you're already scarred. You're scarred in a particular form or the other, whether it be good or it be bad. You know, your subconscious mind has received so much impute that it's, that it's already set in a particular direction. It's, it's still redeemable, no doubt, but enough damage has been done that that personality is kind of formed. You know, whether you're an introvert, extrovert, whatever, it's already formed a whole lot by the time you're age five, age seven. Now, between age five, age seven, till about, about 10, going into the early things, you know, that whatever formation begins to now solidify. You could either solidify or you could liquefy, right? So you can either become a strong personality or a weak personality because once the frontal cortex is, is, is developed, it's a questioning, curious part of the brain. It's going to be asking a lot of questions. And depending on the answer or no answer that frontal cortex gets, it, 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 it gives you a strong or weak personality in a particular direction, right? Because a child is trying to ascertain something what is going on and is trying to uh, develop his or personality, right? So those questions. So like we say, it's not what happens in a person's life that determines a person's personality or direction in life. It is the meaning to what happens, right? It is not what happens that changes a person's life. It is the meaning the person gives or associates to that happening that determines what that person gets or does not get from that particular occasion, right? So that's why it's very important when children begin to ask questions and the kind of answers we give to them or not give to them. Okay, if we don't give them answers, they will still find answer. Mm. The question is, they might be getting the answer from the wrong place. Mm. They can either be answering the questions themselves based on what they already know. They could be talking to some other adult somewhere else but somehow they're going to get some meaning to what is happening. And that meaning will form who they become. So don't cry later on and say that, oh, my, I, I didn't train this child this way. This is not the way we did this, this, this. <laughs> you did by either omission or commission. Whether you're an active parent or not passive parent, that child will be formed, right? And one of the biggest things we do in forming children is the way we live our own lives, right? Your children are watching you. 
It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter where you take them to. They are trying to find meaning. So they are putting one plus two together. They are looking, they are putting what you said, what the pastor said, what your friend said, your response to your friend, your demeanor, how you did your face, whether you lied, you didn't lie. They are, they are just curious. They are trying to put meaning to all of that. Who they become is a result of all of that together. So it's not just what you teach them. You have to make sure that all of those things are in congruence. They agree and they are pointing towards where you want them to go. Because if they are not pointing to where they want them to go, you might not, they might not go where you want them to go. We'll continue after, after we pray. Let's pray. Yeah. Riba baba ma kata 
Kalabai, Mahua Kata, Maraka Kabi, Ilakata Kipa Kulama, Kutekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekek
Oh, hallelujah.
You are muted. You are muted. Hello, you are muted. All right. Good. Yeah, so, I was yeah. mute again. I've had yeah. several incidents of being mute. And I, <laughs> I preached a wonderful message on Saturday. But guess what? Mm. I was mute. It wasn't recorded. I preached mm. myself. Wow. Anyways. Uh, uh, we're continuing the morning, you know, and pretty much our personality gets formed, right? As we go from when our frontal cortex, the question in curious, curious part of us is formed. I begin to ask questions of form meaning. Those meanings shape our life, right? Obviously, we're talking about a perfect journey here. Some people have incidents in their life that mad them. Maybe they get abused. Maybe they didn't have their parents died, you know? And a, a child's mind is wondering, what's that? Parents dying or not dying? All of those form who will become because these are questions. Um, there's something called the continuum of life. Right on the continuum of life, there's we it, it, we we start being dependent beings. When we come into into this life, we're very dependent. We're hundred percent dependent. We cannot do anything ourselves. So we come into this life hundred percent dependent. But that dependent nature reduces as we grow. We begin to be able to do some things ourselves. Right. At the point where we're 100% dependent, that's when you, you have, you, they, we need maximum parenting, right? Mm -hmm. But that maximum parenting must not stay the same all our life. That's what we miss it with our children. That's what our parents missed it with us. See, my, my mother is a very strong personality. That didn't do well for me as a person. Because in, when you have a strong personality, I don't know how to use it well. You tend to want to parent to the maximum always. You want to be in control of everything concerning your children and yourself. That is not good. But anybody that seeks control has a problem. Life is meant to be, it's not meant to be a place where we're seeking for 100% control of everything. You want to be, oh, we must be crossed. Perfectionism is not of God and it's not a mature personality. I grew up a perfectionist, I can tell you. But I've also read about a lot of other people. Being a, it's good to, to seek perfection, but you need to understand that life is what it is. Life is not perfect. Let's not deceive ourselves. Life is not perfect. 
you have to accommodate the imperfection of life. If you don't accommodate the imperfection of life, you always have a headache. You always have problem. You always be not at ease. Every single thing, oh, it might happen. It might happen. You live in fear. And fear does not help. The Bible says fear has torment. You cannot grow to the fullness of what God wants you to be or who God wants you to be out of fear. If you think that every T must be crossed, every I must be dotted, there's a problem. There's a place of doing our part. There's a place where we'll leave the things we cannot do to God. That's why faith, belief, is an essential part of our lives. When you want to guide against every possible thing that can go wrong, then you lack faith. Obviously, I'm not telling you there are, there are two extremes to this. We're trying to talk about the place of balance. It's a place where people just say faith, 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 and do nothing. They sleep in church and they expect God to prosper them. That is also stupidity. That's one extreme. The other extreme is where you are guided. Oh, everything was done. You are not God. Life, there's no life that is perfect. All the T's cannot be crossed. All the I's must not be, cannot be dotted. There's a reason why they are not. That space is the place of our growth. Right? So life is about balance. It's about balance. It's not any extreme. It's not too controlled. It's not too fair free. It's just life. It's just being. You do what you can. The rest you leave to God. Faith is an essential part of our growing. If you don't, if you if you don't have faith, you cannot grow to the fullness of the person God wants you to be. Right? So we talk about growing and all of that. So we talk about the continuum of life. We're common dependent. We need maximum parenting. But that parenting must reduce as our dependency reduces. You cannot parent your child for the rest of his life. You cannot parent your child when he's supposed to be an adult. That's why children fight with parents. So. That's why a lot of people are not attaining to the fullness of the purpose God has for them. Because they were not allowed to grow. Well, our time is up. We'll continue tomorrow. God helping us. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to make a request of you all before I release you. Uh, next week, I do have an official school I need to attend. It's a certificate school at my work. You know, it requires that I be in attendance to be able to get a certificate. Uh, so I'm not going to be available the whole of next week because I have to do this course. So the question is, do Pastor Shego, do you want, do I leave it in your hands or should we take, typically we're supposed to take our Sabbath after six weeks, right? This is our fourth week here. So we have two more weeks to go. Then the seventh week we'll take a Sabbath. So we have one of two options. Uh, if if uh, Pastor Shego is willing uh, to take next week or whoever wants to take next week, you know, while I'm not able to, I'm going to be around just that I have to focus on the class. Um, we could do that option or we just take next week as our Sabbath instead of the seventh week. W which one do you think is best? Any suggestion? Any suggestion? My wife, what was your suggestion? Because you know the battle will follow you if you don't suggest now. Shebu takes it, so we we'll take the Sabbath now. Oh, we'll take the Sabbath. All right. So one of those two. So Pastor Segun, they say they are they are cut anymore. Well, so I, I concur to the suggestion. Yeah. We can take so we can take uh, Sabbath. Did you do the Sabbath, yeah? Yes. Yeah, so. All right. Great. Yeah. Great. Is that is that in agreement with everybody? Auntie Banker, no you want to say okay. Sabbath next week? It's okay. Will you agree, eh? Yeah. It's okay. All right. Great. Great. Yeah. Mr. Ronkenko. Mr. Ronkenko, do you agree? We'll take the Sabbath next week. Mr. Ronkenko, I'm waiting on you. Why are you coming? Bosse, what do you think? Bosse, Mr. Ronkenko. They are really talk so that we can release everybody. Is that okay? You're not, you're not coming on, no? All right, let's release her. Boss and call, do you have anything to say? No, sir. 
All right, so you agree we'll take a Sabbath next week. All right, we'll do a Sabbath next week. It doesn't seem to have carried the day. All right, well, thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. See you tomorrow. God bless you. God bless Bye. you. I did send out the schedule, or I guess, or I put it on the WhatsApp. I, I need to find a way to bring it here also. But I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you all for to pick whatever date. Just send me any date you want in this third quarter. Send me four dates you want in this fourth quarter, and I'll, I'll put it into the schedule. Thank you. God bless you all. Have a great, great remaining of the afternoon. See you tomorrow. Yeah, bye.